what's up youtube welcome back to another video welcome back to another video filled with gems so how you guys doing um this is going to cover some of the most basic well some of the one of the most basic concepts that every trader should know right and then we're going to talk about liquidity right liquidity should be the basic thing that every trader should know because why that is how the markets move liquidity the market is not moving without liquidity right so jumping straight into it guys if you have any questions or anything like that you want to know anything about um let's say teachings any mentorship stuff like that links are in the description right we're not going to spend too much time on that let's get straight to the gems so liquidity what is liquidity um liquidity is buyers and sellers guys the market moves because of buyers and sellers right if you ever look at a futures contract if you ever look at um options trading right you will see that you have bid prices you have ax prices and everything like that right so a basic breakdown of that is the market moves on liquidity so the market is not moving if there's not enough buyers versus sellers or if there's not enough sellers to buyers right so if market was equally placed out let's say there was enough buyer for every seller right that means we would go in a range the market would move just like this if there was enough buyers and enough sellers at every time the market would go just like this right but we're human okay we're human we all have opinions on the market so the market's never just going to stay there in that range forever because like i said we're human we have different opinions we have different outlooks we all we all always have a different perspective on things so some person might be wanting to buy the market and then another person might be wanting to sell the market that's how the market moves right so the market moves because there's an imbalance between buyers and sellers simple okay because of imbalance between buyers and sellers so if there is buyers at one point and if there's not enough sellers to cover that market's going higher right if there is sellers at a place and there's not enough buyers to cover that market's going lower okay simple as that guys that's how the market moves between buyers and sellers so how do we use that liquidity to our advantage right so understanding what the liquidity is how do we use that we know that market loves liquidity after each high each low daily high daily low right your higher time frame points are going to be your main areas of liquidity right so basically another term is so when the market does something like this let's say the market is creating highs and lows at a certain area and at a certain price point there is liquidity being built underneath this price point why because we have buyers here buyers here buyers here and we retail right when you go into like that retail trading we usually have stop losses underneath these areas here where there is a lot of pool of liquidity so what do you think the market what do you think the higher institutions want to do they want to drive this market here into that pool of liquidity so they can fill their orders right because they need that liquidity to fill their orders they can't take the market higher if they don't have enough orders being filled here to take the market higher right so they need that liquidity to move the market as fast as impulse as efficiently as they can to fill their orders because if they don't have the liquidity they can't fill their orders right if there's nobody else on the opposite side that they can buy out they cannot fill the orders okay so sometimes you'll have a case where let's say buyers want to get into the market they'll buy out all the selling pressure just to take the market higher so they'll actually get in at a terrible place just to take the market higher right because they have the money to do so. They have millions and billions of dollars. They have the money to do so. So the market moves because of buyers and sellers, inefficient between buyers and sellers. All right, cool. So now let's get into liquidity, right? What is liquidity? Liquidity, and we're gonna use it as an example here. We're gonna go through the charts. I'm gonna show you guys examples. All right, so here's the liquidity period. Here's the liquidity pool. It's called liquidity pool underneath these lows. Why you can see the amount of bias there is at this price point what do you think is happening when the market is doing this we have buyers getting in here buyers getting in buyers getting in potential sellers 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 there's a lot of liquidity being built at this area and that liquidity is usually a magnet for the market this area is going to be a magnet for the market so with the market being all the way up here what do you think your target should be let's say you get into a sale here this should be your target why because the market is going to gravitate towards that area because it's a pool of liquidity that is a potential area for um other institutions to fulfill their orders a potential area for 
institution to redistribute their orders as in use this money to continue the market down or use this money to bring the market back higher it doesn't matter but we know that they want to use this money so they have to get the they have to drive the price down there to get that pool of liquidity okay so market tends to drive towards pools of liquidity what else can be used as liquidity trend lines right we know trend lines can be used as liquidity and in this example let's look at this right this high here above all these highs what do you think was happening above all these highs right what do you think was happening above all these highs this is also a different type of pool of liquidity it's a trend line liquidity you can call it what do you think was happening as the market was doing this market goes higher we sell off we go higher we sell off we go higher what do you think the opinions of people trading this market is going oh this market every time we come up here to these highs we're selling off we're not you feel me we're not making higher highs we're making lower lows we're just we're tapping at this area and the market is selling off so what do you think people are doing every time we come up here they're going to try to sell the market around these prices because they see this trend line liquidity that is forming and a lot of people is thinking this oh we should be selling we should be selling so they're building liquidity here and what does the market do what do you see it happen? We manipulate those highs. We go above this liquidity. Now we're using this pool of liquidity here to build this schematic, right? Now I'm gonna get into whack off. I'm gonna cover whack off just a little bit, right? So whack off is the best execution, I would say, not the best execution, but the best execution for us to determine where the market is accumulating or distributing orders, right? And what do we mean by accumulating distributing orders? So the market, when we have a Wyckoff schematic, and I know some a lot of people hear Wyckoff and they get scared, but I'm gonna explain it in simple terms. When we have a Wyckoff schematic, it is basically either sellers and distribution is either sellers building orders to take the market down or accumulation is buyers building orders to take the market higher. In this case, we are building orders to take the market down. What does that look like? exactly what it looks like here we have this high here liquidity this high here liquidity this high could have potentially been liquidity it doesn't matter right but the point here is the market will drive right institutions will drive the market higher and drive the market lower inside of this range what does that mean we are building liquidity here so as they're creating this range what do you think is happening we have buyers trying to get in we have sellers trying to get in all of this stuff is happening and all of that is building liquidity why do you think they want to build that liquidity to fulfill their orders right once they have their once they have their orders fulfilled and they can get priced in on their orders because they need liquidity to actually get priced in they can't just buy and sell the market because they have millions of dollars so they need to do it systematically right whether it's a trader doing it whether it's an algorithm doing it it doesn't matter right they still need to do this this is not something that it doesn't matter if an algorithm does because i know a lot of people talk about algorithms it doesn't matter what does it. it doesn't matter if an algorithm is pricing these orders for them it does not matter right the fact is they have to do this in order to successfully get into the market okay so when they're fulfilling these orders in the market like this what do you think is going to happen once they get their orders filled the market is going to sell off right market is going to drop okay so a perfect example of this accumulation or distribution of orders and we can go here to eu right and i've been talking about this um with my group a lot so <laughs> look at this right here look at these distros right distribution 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 right and we also have accumulations here so what what do you think when, when people say how does the market move how, how do you think the market moves right we have buyers getting in here we have sellers getting in here right what do you see happens after every time sellers gets into the market what do you see happens every time distribution happens the market sells off okay here market sells off here the market had a huge sell-off to the point where what do you think this is what what is this this is a bigger distribution, right? What do you see? In a distribution, all distribution looks like is this. And the point of this, and the point of these drives is liquidity, liquidity, till we can fulfill those orders. Once we get those orders fulfilled at the best price point, they don't need to, they don't need to drive the market anymore. After that, they're just gonna mitigate and go lower right because they don't need any more orders they have all their orders filled that's it so what do you think market was doing here what do you think institutions was doing here buying buying selling 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 until they could have gotten the good orders in once they got that price point for their orders to get fulfilled look what happened these 
these little areas didn't matter anymore. You see these accumulations didn't matter to them anymore. The market just pushed straight through it. Why? Because distro, distro, distro. These distributions is sellers filling their orders. It's a perfect example right here. And what happens? This is a huge distro on a bigger time frame. Okay, so this is an example of liquidity. These highs here were being used as liquidity. Why do you think, well, this high is liquidity point two. Why do you think these highs were used as liquidity? Because we have a distribution of sellers here. That means there's a lot of money going into this to the downside. We have a distribution of sellers here. There's a lot of money here going to the downside. So these are pools of liquidity, okay? So when the market drives like this above these areas here, and you can see we create another distribution to fill more orders, right? But this is a huge pool of liquidity. So with this huge schematic, what do you think is gonna happen to EU? You think EU is just gonna give a small reaction here and then pull back? No, this is going to fall off, right? When they're, when, when, when they're ready and this market starts going on that downtrend, this market is gonna fall off. What happened here? What, what do we see happen here at these highs over here? What is this? Is this not a distro? Look at this, guys. Look at this distro and look at the reaction that we got after this distro. The market continued just continually redistributing to the downside. So that's something I just kind of got off track for a little bit talking about accumulations and distributions, but that's another form of liquidity, right? The accumulation and distribution is simply the market building orders, building liquidity so they can push the market either higher or lower, right? Accumulation means they building orders. So that means they're going to manipulate and induce sellers, right? They want to induce sellers in accumulation. They want to induce the opposite side so they can take the market higher in a distribution. They're going to induce the opposite side, which will be buyers to take the market lower. So how do they induce right in an accumulation? If the market is going down, right? And accumulation looks something like this. They'll push the market lower. When you look at this, what do you think? Oh, I'm going to sell from right here. I'm going to take the market lower. What happens? Oh, I, I accidentally deleted it. We'll start over again. All right. So boom, right? They'll push the market down, right? That's our first drive. What do you think happens? Oh, we're going to continue selling this market. We're continuing making lower lows. After that, what does the market do? We push back up. They push it down again. What do you think is happening? Sellers are like, yeah, this is going crazy. We're going to continue pushing this market down. Okay. Boom, they push the market down again. All of this, all they're doing is inducing. <laughs> they're inducing. They're inducing, hey, keep selling this market. Keep selling this market. Keep selling this market. Maybe buyers want to get in too. Even the buyers that wants to get in, they're inducing them as well because as they're pushing the market higher, they're also selling the market too. Why? Because what is that going to do? That's going to tell, hey, man, maybe we should try to buy this market every time it comes down here. And they're also taking out these lows as well, right? just building a whole bunch of liquidity. And what happens after that? Market push higher. Boom, right? Once they fill their orders, once they get that price point to where they can fill all their orders and they have enough liquidity, what happens after that, right? Market pushes higher. They come back down, fill that, right? They mitigate their orders. I know you guys heard about mitigations, order box, stuff like that. We won't get into that. We're just talking about liquidity, okay? Boom, once they mitigate their orders, the markets take off. The markets take off. Why? Because there was a lot of orders being filled here. And once institutions have their orders filled, the markets just take off. Right. Um, another example I can give you guys of that happening is here on GU. Right. Look at this distribution here. Look how they successfully filled their orders here. And just look at the reaction of GU after that. Look how the market just completely took off. This happens day in and day out on this market, guys. Um, in this example here, we can talk about accumulations going to the upside, right? What is happening here? This is exactly what we we're just talking about, right? Inducing, 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 right? Look at this huge sell off. What do you think is happening? They're inducing right? They're inducing people, hey, continue selling this market. And look what happens. They actually build a schematic, another one, another schematic. So all of these lows are liquidity. All these lows are liquidity, right? So building all this liquidity, getting their orders filled, what happens to the market? Takes off. We take off, right? Go ahead and create another accumulation here. Same thing again. We take off, right? We take off. 
look, look, look at the reactions here, guys. Look how the market is taking off after these. So just pay attention to that and just pay attention to liquidity, right? So that is an advanced form of liquidity that I wanted to show you guys. But we guys, we also know the simple liquidity points, which is daily highs, daily lows, right? We guys know under each high and low, there's liquidity. That is simple liquidity, right? But when we get to advanced liquidity, talking about accumulations and distributions and orders being filled, that is advanced liquidity concept so that's something that i wanted to introduce to you guys right of course we have the simple liquidity points as we have this low this low is a key liquidity point why because there is an accumulation underneath here right there was a lot of orders being built here which means there is a lot of money sitting here so in order for us to take this out we need a strong selling bias right we're going to need a strong selling bias in order to take this low out because there is a lot of money being built here so if this low gets taken out you know the sellers are in control of this market so that means we should be going on the side of sellers right in this case that's another way that you can use liquidity knowing where the strong points of liquidity is and when the market invalidates those strong points as in like um a key area where the market has bought from or sold from in this example we can go in eu right this is a key area that the market has bought from so once this low here got taken out we know this was a major area Right, this was a major area with a lot of money. So once this low got taken out, what can we expect? We we can say that, hey man, um, whoever is selling this market is completely in control right now because every accumulation that you see here is actually going to get invalidated, right? Every accumulation is going to get invalidated because of these, right? Because of those. So liquidity, guys, it is very important to understand who's moving the market. It's very under. Uh, important to understand the imbalance between those two buyers and sellers and it is important to understand liquidity right so extending this lesson a little bit more right i'm giving you guys some tips and everything like that look at these highs right here what do you think is happening at these highs we have liquidity above these highs so because of that right because we have these liquidity that we have this high we have those highs we have those highs. so there's a lot of sellers above here because we have that above those highs I am very cautious about selling the market here. We can see this is a point of interest, order block, sponsor candle, whatever you want to call it. But we're going to be very cautious, right? This might not be like, you know, a super 100% risk risk um, trade to take. We might risk less on this trade. Why? Because we have liquidity above here. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at your, when you're looking at your um, points of interest and you're looking at these things, where is liquidity? Is liquidity above your point of interest? If it is, be, you know, have a lot more caution when you're taking your trades when liquidity is nearby because the market could easily do something like this. Could easily uh, spike up here and then go lower, okay? Why can't the market do that? Just because this is a, what, a point of interest is because it's a candle? They don't care about that. They just care about fulfilling orders, right? So just understand that, just understand that liquidity is what runs the market okay so when you pay attention to those areas pay attention to liquidity areas right i'm not talking about just simple daily highs and daily lows four hour highs and four hour lows yes those are liquidity points as well but those are low levels of liquidity pay attention to the key areas of liquidity that's where it makes sense right that's where liquidity really comes in when you pay attention to the key areas those major points okay focus on those major points because we can mark out daily highs and daily lows all day okay daily highs and daily lows gets taken all day okay and there's actually a strategy that i'm building based on daily highs and daily lows with liquidity and stuff like that that i'm introducing to my mentorship but right that's something that i'm building it's a little scalping strategy but you know going away from that pay attention to the key areas of liquidity where is the pools of liquidity at okay don't get stuck on the low low forms of liquidity yes you can use that for lower time frame moves and smaller moves but pay attention to the key areas guys that's something that i wanted to introduce to you guys i hope you guys took some information and knowledge from that i will be dropping more videos more gems for you guys all right i will see you guys in the next one peace out